strays. 19 animals and 7,000 strays. The sun is shining and it's darker than before. If you're hoping for a harder than you'll find an open door. In the worship of the water to whatever to the wind to the ones who have come from a way we say. Welcome to the world. A cock to crack a bottle of wine We're swinging with the stars Without standing in line Fishing with the beavers Hanging with the hunks Every time they hit the seeds They're all slam dunks Sparkling conversation Inside information A bona fide Broadway Backstage education Break out the bubbly It's time to toast With your lovable Laughable Affable host So hold on tight We're hot to go the Broadway Cat Reunion Show. How I was, I was ready. I was ready to kiss the cod. I'm here. Where did you get that? The fish market. It's a real fish. Is it real? Oh, it's it sure is. <laughs> God. The things I do for this show, Lee. I'm telling you, you'd like sneak out of the house and go to the dollar store and the fish market without my permission. Exactly. Now I'm going to have to figure out what you have to wash your hands. <laughs> well, that's why we have a montage coming up in a few minutes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Broadway Cast Welcome. Reunion. Of Come from How are you? Are you good, I'm Robert? Fantastic. I'm wonderful. I know we're both so excited about tonight. I'm so excited. I'm so, I mean, I'm always excited about these shows, but I'm really excited about um, tonight's show. Um, and I've been listening to the uh, cast album, cast recording, and um, I, I've just been like reading as much as I can. Um, I mean, I was so moved by this, but I've just been like anything that I could find online. And it's just fascinating to me um, that this musical, how it came to be. For sure. Really, yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that have not seen Come From Away, I'm talking to the two of you out there. <laughs> um, uh, this musical is based on a, a true uh, story on 9-11. Uh, planes had to be diverted from the U.S. And um, 38 planes landed in the town of Gander, Newfoundland. Um, and I, I believe, the girls will tell me if I'm wrong, that 7,000 people uh, entered this town of 9,000 inhabitants. Yeah. So like that in itself is hard to wrap your brain around. And the, the locals in this town just embraced these passengers. And that's what the musical is about. And I'm really thrilled because we have the original Broadway female leads uh, with us tonight. I'm very excited. It's so go on. We have spoken to so many people on a weekly basis. Lee and I talk to people on, on Instagram and we give away tickets for tonight. And people have been so excited. There are people who have seen the show 15, 20, 30 times. It's, it's a moving story, uh, especially for people who lived through that time. And a story that I don't think without this musical being told, we would all necessarily know. So right. it's exciting to talk to them tonight. Right, I'm thrilled. Well, we've got a, a little montage of the musical that we want to share with you before we have the cast join us.
It's so nice to have you all here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Wait, what's happening with Kendra? Kendra. I don't know. <laughs> I think she's frozen. She's having, frozen. A moment. She's having a moment. She's frozen yeah. or very unenthused to be here, but then we know that's not the I know, case. right? Oh, oh you're not. Yes. Wait, that's so right. No. Well, hey, hey, hey. 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 I think oh, they're, no. they're going to. They're it's like a game show. Show. It's like a catch Kendra. <laughs> How is everybody? Good. Good, healthy, Fabulous. yes, good, 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 good. Um, where is everybody? New York, Toronto? I think I'm, I'm the only one in New York right now, right? Okay. I think so, I was just in New York uh, and then I was just in a hotel Sheridan at the airport last night, now I'm home. Okay. <laughs> in Toronto. Where's home? Where's home? Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. Okay. And Jen? You're oh. muted. You're muted. We can't hear you. We're sorry. Oh. Nope. Okay. Well, All right. it's okay. We're going to work on it. Christian is on it, our trusty engineer. Petrina, where are you? I'm at home in St. John's, Newfoundland. Oh, lovely. Oh, mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. And that's the first thing we need to do, Lee. You're lovely. Yeah. But there's one thing I need you to understand. It's Newfoundland. What did I say? I think you said Newfoundland, which a lot of people say, but it's, it's Newfoundland. 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 Like, understand? Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Got it. Hi, Kendra. Got it. Yeah. Kendra. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Kendra. Yay. Oh, we can hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, there yes. you are, Jennifer. Good, 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 good. So, Petrina, you, you, you live there. And how, how did this all come about? You becoming part of the Broadway production. <laughs> my story is like uh, an old Hollywood girl in the candy store at the right moment kind of story, which is funny. I was actually in Gander on the 10th anniversary when David Hine and Irene Sankoff were there doing their research uh, and ran into them at the one coffee shop that isn't a Tim Hortons. Uh, and the person who was with me, the actor who was with me was from Toronto and knew them and was like, this is so weird. I know those two people. And um, we went over and said hello, and we just, they told me what they were doing. And I was like everybody else in Gander at the time. I was like, you're writing a musical about what? Okay, good luck. <laughs> but uh, we stayed in touch, uh, and they saw me do a couple of things in Toronto while I was up there doing some work. And I was invited to audition and lucky enough to land the part. Wow. Mm. They were lucky. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. What... I mean, I know opening a Broadway show in and of itself is thrilling um, for sure, but obviously this uh, Broadway show holds a lot uh, deeper meaning uh, because of the, the, the story behind it. And um, what was that? Do you remember opening night? I know it's several years back, but do you remember that moment? I think the, the bigger moment for all of us was um, during uh, previews or, or like our, we had an invited dress rehearsal where there were first responder families and docents from the 9-11 uh, museum and things like that who were in the audience. And I think that might be the, the time when we felt that pressure. We were fortunate enough, all of us, to have followed the journey of the show from La Jolla and Seattle all the way through. So we had opened in many places and knew that the show would be most likely accepted well. So I don't think any of us were really um, afraid that it wouldn't go over well. I remember sure. Ast Astrid and myself and Lee McDougall, who were all like Broadway newbies, were like, if this was any other show, I would be terrified tonight. But I'm just excited because we know people are going to respond well to it. But that night when we had the uh, the the first responders and their families and and the docents and things in the house, that was that was very special. And I think we all felt the uh, kind of the weight of that show for those people. Got it. And I know you're 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 from Newfoundland, but <laughs> um, uh, uh, Jen and and Sharon and and Kendra, have you been since being in this production? Have has the cast been there? We, we did, we all went uh, to do a, um, 
a staged reading of it prior to our run in Toronto. And um, I, I don't want to speak for everyone else, but I know that you'll say it's true. <laughs> it was one of the most exquisite um, experiences of, of our careers, of our, of our lives, honestly. Um, we just wanted to honor them. We wanted to make sure that they felt taken care of. And this is the part that I love to share the most. Um, when we sing the opening number, Welcome to the Rock, there's a lyric uh, that sings, I'm an Islander, as you just heard at the beginning, from whomever that was singing. Um, that wasn't the Broadway cast. It was so interesting. We were, we were chatting and we were like, who is this singing? Um, I don't, we don't know where you got this, this cut, but um, they sounded delightful. They just weren't us. Um, <laughs> when we sing, I'm an Islander, um, when we sang that at, in Gander, um, they rose to their feet and started clapping and stomping their feet, in essence, letting us know that not only did they approve that they were so excited we were there, and um, we just lost it. We all started crying like immediately. It was one of the coolest moments ever. And anytime I sing that lyric now, I, I think of that moment. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. That's well, powerful. <laughs> What's so uh, interesting to me is that I'm born and raised in New Jersey. I, I was I saw the Twin Towers from school I was in that day. And with all the turmoil that goes on in this heavy storyline that's interwoven in, in behind Come From Away, it's a story that I never we never heard. With all of with everything else that was going on at that time, the the people of Gander that took people in and, and made them people feel at home during a scary, tumultuous time in history they never would have had the chance to have this story told in this way if it wasn't for you as artists and the people who wrote the story and put it up to be able to tell it. So that's a really special gift. And then we get to see some of the humanity, especially in times like now that is existing in the world, I think is quite a gift to everyone who buys a ticket and sits in, in the theater. So thank yeah. you for sharing the, being a part of sharing that story with everybody. I also just wanna say just quickly in talking about what was opening night like, I think that for us that it really was opening it in gander that that felt like the most important opening of all of the openings that we did because we did the show in the hockey rink in gander that they had used as the world's largest refrigerator and there were all these people there that we were actually portraying on stage and we were portraying the stories that they had all told and so you know they would the characters themselves would get entrance applause. Like I'll never forget when Petrina came out and she was Bonnie Harris from the Gander SPCA. And I mean, people cheered, like the real Bonnie stood up. Like it was, it was so, you know, honestly, like Gander was way more thrilling than opening in New York. Opening in New York was just more sort of anxiety driven in a way of like, what's the times gonna say? You know, yeah. that sort of stuff. But the joyful time and the was scander. And I remember too, there was this Matt, there was an incredible time of that space when everybody was lining up to come into the rink, the hockey yeah. rink. And we're all hanging out with a very like stinky fish, you know. Um, no, but, um, and it's like that thing of like, okay, it was this weird space of curiosity outside. Are we going to be able to to say this, to tell this? So when Jen told that story about I'm an Islander, when we felt that, it just cracked us open. You yeah. know, it was like, okay, let's tell the story now. Let's do this. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I heard that the. Um, Producers, I guess, um, invited the the actual uh, 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 townspeople that you portray. They bring them to the openings of each city that the show is sitting in, um, which is incredible. It's a real for every, honor every new company cities. that yeah. is opened. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Asher. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it's it's a real honor for whatever city is opening to have them there because. They bring something that's not even nameable. It's just when you get to, as a cast member, having met Beulah and Diane, who kind of make up the character that I, the main character that I play. It's just such a to get to know them and to like you feel like family. Like it's like finding long lost family because they did such a good job. And I think with all of the companies, but with our company, it's like you you meet your people and you go. Yeah, I'm kind of a combo of these two women. How did they even, you know, manage that? It's pretty awesome. And so brave of them to like 
be up on the stage and take their yeah. mouth, take their acceptance. You know, it's I mean, what a brave journey of not knowing, you know, maybe not knowing theater or the, you know, Broadway. You know, it's like, good for you guys, you know, come on. Well, up. Was, and their journey too of like the first time that we did anything with them. I mean, somebody wore like a hockey jersey. Do you remember all that? They would drape themselves in Newfoundland flags. And now like yes. they all have suits and they're, you know, <laughs> they're done. But we're very oh, they still got the jerseys them. too. They sure. <laughs> we You'll so never well. shut down the hockey pride and there will always be Newfoundland flags as capes. Yeah, always. yeah. But yeah, but we we keep in close contact with the people that we play, right? Jen? Oh wow! <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's correct. I'm in Captain Bass's house right now in Florida. Right, oh, right. The second we went on an airboat today on a tour of the Everglades with with four of her best friends. Uh, she's upstairs watching. She was on the couch, but it was the sound was bleeding over. Now just threw <laughs> Captain Bass out of her own living room. Captain Bass. <laughs> then when. She'll come I down. She'll, she'll, I, I asked if she would come down. Captain, I know that you're watching. There might be a little lag, but if you want to come down and say hi, we won't make you do much else. She's she's nervous in front of the camera. But if you want to come down and wave, I know everybody would love it. In front of the camera. Oh, I, think so. I think she's great. She could have she, it. I got a text from her saying that my hair looked good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so when you did when you first opened and you were on the View, the morning show, the View. Yeah. Captain Bass was in the audience, and at that time, so this is 2017, she said she had seen the show 68 times. <laughs> so now let her tell you. It's like how many that. times have you seen I get to have her all out. four days to my. Oh, so, she oh. can't hear you. Here, oh. put that on. Oh, oh. There I get Hello. to have her all four days to myself. Oh, my <laughs> how many times have you seen the show? Captain I've seen the show 158 times. Oh my, <laughs> my God. <laughs> well, it is an honor to have you on our show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I wasn't expecting to be on. I bought tickets so I could watch it. <laughs> you're, 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 you're an original Broadway gal too, so there you go. So you got to be here. Wow. Okay, here she is. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Yay. 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 She she imagine it special. all of us if we were like, and actually, I have to have Diane right here. You're like, you're like, come here, come here. Oh my God. Well, Come you over know, here. Brian. Brian. I know Brian. that. Uh, Don't be shy. I know when we when we started the show, we said we had you know the um, uh, the five original uh, Broadway female leads with us, but there were actually six, um, and and Q Smith was to be with us, and and then um, a, about a week ago, she realized that she was going to be in flight <laughs> right now, but she did send. Um, a little message for all of you that I want to oh, share. Yeah. Oh, God. Come on, Caleb. Hey, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for having us. I so wish I could be there with you, but I'm there in spirit. I'm always there in spirit. Trust me and believe me. Hi to all the fans. Thank you to for supporting us through thick and through thin. And uh, hey, girls. Hey, Kendra. Hey, Jen. Hey, Sharon. Sharon. That's my roommate. <laughs> Sharon. Yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. And I know you all are going, no, Q, no. Yes, Q, why not? Huh? <laughs> why not? Okay. Hi, Astrid. Hi, Petey. Um, well, since I cannot be there. They did ask me to answer a couple of questions. One question is particularly, favorite memory? Uh, well, there are a few, there are a lot, but there are two that I'm going to speak on. Um, the first, I'm gonna give you a clue, a clue. <clears throat> oh, it's so nice up here. Oh, <laughs> such, the scenery is beautiful, what a great, view ah oh, the view is so nice huh. you know what i'm talking about girls i laughed so hard that day until i peed on myself pretty much i just told on myself i don't care um but yep 
<laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. The second thing is the night of our first rehearsal for the Tonys at Radio City Music Hall. We finished our show and then we get on the bus going to Radio City, City Music Hall around 10.30 at night. And we were all like so giddy. We're like little kids. It's like, oh my God, we're going to the Tonys. What did you do last night? What are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? I'm going to wear a costume. Blah, blah, blah. We were like, the. it was like the best Christmas ever. We, we have to pinch ourselves. But that was a great experience. And on top of that, the actual performance of the Tonys, it's like a blur because I was so nervous. And I think I'm speaking for everyone. I think we all were so, so nervous. I mean, you know, we're pounding our foot hard we're just in it hard welcome to the rock if you come from me. <laughs> okay did i say the right line i don't know i said the right line is it my turn oh my god it's my turn i said my line did i say the right line like i was so nervous we were all so nervous and to get through that performance together was was amazing well i was so proud of everybody that night because i know all of our hearts were just racing so fast and it was like the best Christmas day ever. It was like our dreams coming true. <sighs> Those are good times. Good times. More good times ahead. So anyway, I will see you all soon. And again, I wish I could be there, but I am with you in spirit. And I will see you soon. Mwah! Love you guys. Oh, love you guys. <laughs> Bye, <Spirit. laughs> <laughs> that should be the whole show. Dropping my mic. I would watch an hour of that. <laughs> I just got like a hit of how boring your backstage. Oh, you can't like stand, stand each other. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she uh, makes me laugh so hard. I can't. Yeah. Well, Does she talk uh, about the Dover Faults? Is that is that? I think the she's talking about? about the view. The view, the day when we were oh. in the utility oh. closet. Oh. Oh. We, we, we stole. We stole no, from the view. Me. I'm telling on us right now. This is what happened. We went to the view. We're all like we were on the view, and they put us in a in utility a closet. closet. Yeah. That's where our hold was. They're not even a green room. They put us in a utility closet that had a bunch of swag from like a bunch of us. So we were like, got me a shirt, got me some cream. Like, yeah. We cleaned them out because we, we were in a utility closet. And we were so simply. It was like, hey, this is, there's a big stack of books. You want a book? And I mean, then we were like, this box isn't even open. <laughs> Who needs blush brushes? <laughs> Oh, I, and I was like, what, you got the blush brush? Oh, you got the set of blush brushes? The set. The set. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. You don't need them at the view. It's fine. Well, you know what? what is, um, can you give us a little, everyone watching wants to know what it's like backstage. That's the, your fans that are watching right now, they want to know what is it like. This. It's this. It's this. It's this, with, it's this with less clothes. <laughs> <laughs> We have some bits that we have done forever. <laughs> um, you know, it's just and the same things. Like doors were so close that I could have a conversation with Trina or Astrid that's the <laughs> furthest away from you. You know, it's like, hey, Astrid. <laughs> hey, Kendra. <laughs> Do you have any? There's a lot of Come singing. Along. A lot of singing. Oh, we always were like, the Canadians are singing again. The Canadians will break Maybe out the song. Singing the well, Canadians are singing again. Katrina's phenomenal at harmonizing, and I like to sing any anything reminds me of a song. I just start singing. So <laughs> yeah. I'm always oh, lonely Lord. because Q is the last person to come up. She comes up at like 15 minutes till curtain and gets her wig on. And so I'm always in the dressing room. Like, behind on that right. one. You're very, you're no pants. That's right. <laughs> it's true. No, well, they're called places, and she's no <laughs> pants, and is like, are you guys going down? Like, I think so. <laughs> and one of the other bits that we do just so for the fans is that somebody will perhaps myself occasionally will say okay girls good night like and i'll just start leaving naked and then it'll always be like oh i forgot my shoes forgot my with, with just her scarf and like her bag completely naked and she's like oh darn it i forgot my shoes <laughs> 
Now they know. Well, you know, speaking of your fans, um, some a bunch of them have written us and have. There you go. Nick and Diane. Hey, hi. <laughs> Little Diddy. I was just Nick and Diane. Diane. Are they from the Diddy or are they different Nick and Diane? <laughs> <laughs> we, they, so many fans have told us their stories. I mean, we have fans of people who were so excited about today because they were supposed to see the show and they ended up actually donating a, a kidney to a loved one and missed the show. So this is their chance to see it. People who have went to the show and cried through the whole time, have seen it 25 times. Do you guys have stories personally of people you've met or experiences you've heard about that have touched the show. There must be people that have followed you and have intertwined that you have created a relationship with, even if it's just on stage in an audience. It's such a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. We have the best fans. Sure. Yeah. yeah, our fans have been absolutely extraordinary. Door, yeah, the, the stage door was different. It was real, I mean, you had some conversations going down the line, you know? Mm -hmm. It was, um, that was incredible. Probably one of the favorite parts of the gig, too, you know? The good thing, great thing for me about it was always I would meet people from Newfoundland, Newfoundland Labrador, and uh, they'd just be so proud and so happy and, and tears in their eyes and smiles on their faces. And, and you'd hear people who would say, oh, we had people at our house or my uncle did this, you know, people who are connected. Uh, mm -hmm. And I actually met um, a woman who was, uh, we talk about a scholarship fund that ends up getting set up. And she was one of the very first recipients of the scholarship that was set up. And she's now an English teacher and a figure skating coach and like just That's incredible cool. to, to continue to watch um, the lives of these people who are connected to the show continue on. And I've met the uh, uh, the woman who uh, raised Ralph the Cocker Spaniel after after he arrived where he was going. I'm, I'm friends with her and I've met people from the zoo who knew Anga. Like it's just incredible that there are still ripples all over the place of people mm -hmm. connected to the show. It's beautiful. And then new connections being made. Sharon, Sharon, you've got a good story about going down the line. You did like a, a, a love connection kind of, not like romantic, yeah. but... I went out to the stage door and, and one of the things that's really common is that people want to tell you their 9-11 story. So it's not really, it's, it's not so much like sign the program and can I take a selfie? I mean, there's plenty of that, but often people want to have a witness to what their story is after hearing this story, right? So there were these two women standing there and they clearly had been crying, which is also normal, but really looked like, you know, I make up gone, like sobbing. And I said, you know, are you okay? And they said, our husbands died in the towers. And so we stood and we sort of talked about that. And they said, we didn't really know how to heal. And the show, we found it to be so truthful to our journey and, you know, all the stuff and, and that what they had decided was that they wanted to go to Newfoundland and they wanted to meet the people in Gander who had done all of this, who had brought goodness and kindness to this day of terrible tragedy. So I'm talking to them and I said, you should go. It's great. It's so cool. They're very welcoming. I go down the line, sign, 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 sign. And I meet these two women. We're from Gander. We had people in our house. And I was like, hold on a second. Hey, come up. And so the two women from New York met the two women from Gander. And by the time I left, they had all exchanged numbers. They were already planning the trip. You could stay in my house. We can go over here and eat. It was great. Wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Wow. Well, it's really such a, a testament of, you know, of, of when the human spirit is like magnified with, with goodness and graciousness. And, and it's hard to believe. I, when I, when I read that there were 7,000 people that descended, landed in Gander, a town of 9,000, you know, obviously it wasn't planned and how they embraced that for five days and kept everybody safe and, and, and warm and fed and embraced. It's, it's astounding. It's so incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I uh, remember in Radio City, Katrina, I remember you 
we looked out into the audience and it wasn't it around that amount it was a huge amount of seats and that was the first time i could wrap my head around how mm -hmm. just i mean not everybody gets to see that view but when i saw that view i was like wow that's incredible like what you mind blown mm -hmm. your mind you know able radio to city seats like eight eight nine thousand people and and Someone had just said that over an intercom or something. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, that is how many people were in Gander. And you do, you look out and you see tiers and tiers of seats and it goes on for days and up for days and you realize just how many people that is. Wow. I, yeah. Does anybody know like how the uh, air traffic control chose Gander like as opposed to Toronto or, or a major airport? Well, it, it was a very, it's a very big airport. It was for refueling, so it could handle a lot of, okay. uh, it has a big runway, so it could handle that amount of planes. And because it's a remote place and probably, uh, anybody want to chime in other reasons as well? well it was, the, it was the very, Gander is still the very first uh, point of entry for a lot of uh, international yeah. flights if they're having medical emergencies or anything like that, because it was built during the Second World War uh, to accommodate the military so the the landing strips are very long and they can take these bigger jets that have hundreds of people on them um so they that's why they landed them there um and i think uh, um definitely partially because it was remote and if anything bad happened it's better that it happens in a small remote place than in a highly populated city but it is uh just in terms of how long it takes you to get anywhere the first port of call so it's, it's the first place to stop that has runways that can take those planes. If, awesome. If uh, you have questions for the cast, please send them in because at the end of the show, we take your questions and we ask them. So please make sure you send them in in the comment boxes and maybe we'll choose one of yours. Just wanted to let them know. Send them on over. Um, I just have to ask a completely off topic question to Kendra. <laughs> Kendra, when you were touring um, as Glinda in Wicked, didn't you play the Pantages in Hollywood? Yes. I saw you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we can officially say that's like how, oh, like over a decade. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That was adorable. That was like a pure fan moment, Lee. <laughs> oh, I saw, I saw nice. 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 oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. So, how has everybody been during this year plus and um what have you been doing and sort of like what's your takeaway we always ask this because it's amazing what what people share we can just go around the screen sharon or sharon no oh q would love that she calls me <laughs> karen as you heard and now my kids do it it's hilarious it's, it's true they hilarious. do he was doing it the other day yep Yep. Um, first of all, I just shout out to Astrid, who set up a cocktail party for us every Thursday night mm. at 8.45. And it was just us and Q. And we're talking like for a year, over a it was year. almost a year, yeah. Yeah, that Thursday nights we met up and we hung out and, and really... I would say we kind of went through the stages of grief together in a lot of ways and knew we had a really safe space and, and we laughed and we talked about serious things. And, and um, so that was great. And then Joel Hatch hosted another one on Sunday nights, which was more inclusive of everyone. And um, that's, that's how I got through. I love it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. I did that as much for, yeah, I was, I, yeah, it was, it was, I, it was necessary for me. And sometimes it would just be me waiting for a while. And then I would just go like, <laughs> we have a rule that no one is weird alone. Yeah. No one's weird alone. No one's weird alone. No. <laughs> I love it. So I, I, I and I've tapped into a couple creative things uh, to keep myself uh, going here and there. And I actually wrote uh, the first song I've written in a very long time, and I didn't hate it. So that felt really. That's good. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh, don't freeze on me. <laughs> oh no. How about you, Patrina? 
Oh, I'm so sorry, Astrid froze on that moment. She needed all our, our love and our joy about yes, her writing her song. Here. She'll be um, back. I came home here to Newfoundland and uh, um, we have been uh, in the fortunate place of, because we're a small island with a small population, uh, uh, COVID is here, but but uh, not to the degree that it is in other places. Uh, and during last summer, we were able to live pretty normally. Um, I mean, there was no live theater or anything like that happening, but you could go downtown and sit at a, a restaurant outside with friends and, and all that kind of stuff. So I've been here and just kind of getting my house back in order. I haven't lived in my house in years. So I've been uh, kind of reclaiming this space as my own and, and uh, doing some stuff like that. I did a little uh, teaching at a university. I, I wrote a show and, and did a, a one woman show and I, just keeping busy doing things. There was a TV show <laughs> shooting here. I had a day on, you know, just again, we were just very, very lucky to have things able to happen here. And I know that 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 puts me in a really privileged place. And I'm very, very grateful uh, that that was able to happen. Also, Katrina's famous, just so we're clear. <laughs> Just so we're totally clear. We call her the Julia Roberts. As a Patrina, we were joking with Kelly here about how it's all your fault that she ended up with so many things in the show to do. Can you tell us that story? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Kelly Road is is the Bonnie in Australia. This is what they're talking about because I'm because I'm a jerk and I, I don't have any patience. And when <laughs> when things would ever slow down and and they were like, okay, how are we going to do this? And everybody else, you know, everybody was so in their own like, oh, I have enough to do. I'm too busy. I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just because mostly, honest to God, people like to pretend like I'm generous. I'm like, no. I I have no patience and we were wasting 15 <laughs> minutes trying to figure this out. I will do it. Please let me do it. Uh, so I end up like the very first transition into the very first plane that we do, I move four chairs and put on a coat. <laughs> Which is a lot. Put on a coat. There are 12 And so chairs. everyone who plays that role is like, what do you what is what does she do? What do you want me to do? Well, four chairs and put on a coat. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I, when I watch the videos, I'm like the blocking of this show and remembering what character, that is a whole a special hour in and of itself. You guys oh, really are. With the swings, you should have that with the standbys. Oh, oh my God. God. I don't know how they do what they do. They, they have so much in their heads. Kendra had a lot to do too. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm not talk about forcing you to stay in the moment because your brain drifts and you're like, everyone's all of a sudden you're looking at, I'm looking at Jen and I'm like, why are you looking at me? And it's because I'm going the wrong way, you know? <laughs> and then it throws you off because it's such an orchestrated show from the first downbeat. I mean, it, it is in its own, it's in a rhythm. And it, if it gets jungled, jangled, you're out of luck. Yeah. I, I respect the swing so immensely. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm so moved about the show, to talk, continue about the show, it's not just, uh, there are other major topics in the show besides just 9-11 and, and what went on in Gander. I mean, you guys talk about race and, and sexuality and religion, and, and there's, there's so many prevalent topics. Um, because we were talking about 9-11 being 20 years ago. And as a school teacher, my fifth grade students were not even a thought. So it's it's a foreign, it's, you know, it's, a, it's something so foreign to them. But the show, regardless of your age or where you are from, there's a universal theme throughout it about people and, and about families and coming together. So, um, so if you're watching and the show's coming to your town or you can come to New York, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, of, of some good, good, nuggets of love and sweet moments in throughout the whole entire the, the entire event yeah jen did you want to talk about your your year well i i want to kind of echo what sharon was saying and it was delightful to stay connected with this group of people we also have a text thread um wherein someone will put a picture of their families or their thought uh, of something like every single day we have maintained a very very close relationship and these people have felt very much like family to me for the past six years now. But during this pandemic, I felt uh, lifted and supported and seen and held. And um, I just wanna thank you ladies for continuing to show up no matter uh, how sad I was or, or what was happening in my life. You all held me with such love and grace and I'm so, so deeply grateful. Aww. Family, more family. It's really wonderful. Have they announced when um, Come From Away will reopen? I know they're starting to announce. 
Have they given a date? It's September 21st. It'll be back on the Broadway. Wow. Um, and, you know, we, uh, some of us just filmed, did the film uh, for Apple Plus, and hopefully that'll be released in September as well. You know, I love that they are releasing, you know, Broadway on these platforms because the reach is incredible. I mean, you know, we are, we are lucky because we get to see Broadway shows, we get to see shows on tour, but there's a large portion of our country and, and around the world that have never, we, Robert and I were chatting on one of our pre-show Instagram lives with this um, uh, kid in, um, in, is it Wales, Robert? Uh, Wales. Huh? Wales. In Wales. He yeah. confirmed. Yeah. How does he, how does he breathe in Wales? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> and he's she? never, he's <laughs> never seen, <laughs> he's never seen a show. Oh, and he loves musical theater and he's never seen a show. Um, Aww. Anyway, Maggie. and then this week he popped on and he got tickets to see his first yeah. show in the West Yay. End. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Maggie. because we're Maggie. very, awesome. very um, I think a very religious family and they are, not, you know, they're not all about the theater and um, and he's going and it's, it's very exciting, you know, that's but I, I love that, that is theater exciting. is becoming attainable to everyone. I think that's mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. I agree, Lee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the more shows that are out there to watch, the more that that happens. Like, I remember seeing the movie version of Annie as a kid, and that's what hooked me on musical theater. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the thing. I love this thing. Yeah. Uh, and then anything else that came out after that, that was any, any way near in that vein, I was like, this, more of this. So it's great mm -hmm. that people. With Carol Burnett, right? Yeah. 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 I'm the elephant at that. <laughs> wow. Um, we have a question from yes. Cincy Sarah. <laughs> How easy or hard was it to switch back and forth between characters with different accents and stories on stage? Who wants to take it? It was hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the end. My, my Next question, Cincy Sarah. <laughs> No, I think it was a definite, te I mean, you, we were working on our craft for sure. I think of just, again, that staying in the moment of switching. Um, and you know, it, a body, you kind of started memorizing that feeling, don't you think? You yeah. know, you could kind of tap into the feeling of it. And, um, but yeah, there was some messy moments, you know. <laughs> well, this is somewhat unique. You know, when you're cast in a, in a show, you know, you're cast usually as a character and, you know, for the show. And and so this is pretty unique in that um, everybody played multiples, um, you know, which is, is is not something you see very often. No, it's, it's, it is a wonderful challenge, but the beautiful thing about it, if I can just big up my cast a bit, is that I would look at somebody and they would just be that other person. Like I would often feel like Caesar's Ali and then he's, Kevin Jay and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I'm having the scene with the same actor, but it feels like a different guy. Like it felt on a cellular level, like people changed a bit in front of you. So the magic of, of storytelling and then always the audience provides that magic. I mean, if I say I, I'm a rabbit and I hop around stage and it's important to the story, you mm. provide that I'm, I'm a rabbit. So if I'm say, hey, I'm, hi, I'm Beulah, and the voice changes a bit, or that I'm Dolores, then it's the audience that that provides that extra piece. Because we're still wearing the same stuff mostly. We're, you know, we look pretty much the same. We didn't have time to like get a buzz cut and then glue hair back on. So it's a, you know, it's kind of a. <laughs> and spoiler, there's a rabbit in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> people your, have seen the show before. We'll have to come back and find the bunny. Find, the, find the bunny. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite costumes from the show that you'd want to wear? It doesn't have to be yours. Thanks, Reese Collins. Ooh. Easy. Annette's vest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get so much flack for that vest. Every <laughs> time I think I look cool, there are moments in the show where, like, oh, I, I think I look cool. I feel cool. I look down and see that vest. And I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, no, you're not. 
And there is one little face in that fabric that I swear is giving me stink eye. Like, oh, like don't you, don't you? It's a vest with a bunch of different faces of They're children. dolls. Children. They're dolls, aren't they? Are they? I always think of them as yeah, like, I, I don't see it as often dolls. as you will. What like, did you say, Kendra? Like, scenes. Yeah, it's like it's a small world on a vest, kind of. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you will, <laughs> which I will. Yeah. <laughs> and is it original from La Jolla, Jen? It is. I have the yeah. same vest. I mean, same why food. would they change that? Yeah, they're yeah. like that going to Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Captain Vest gave me her actual captain's jacket that she That's wore. Cool. Uh, when we that? were in Seattle, it was gorgeous with like red lining. And because of the red lining, I could only wear it on stage once. Like Chris Ashley was like, oh my God, we kept just looking at this red lining. Um, but then she had to ask for it back because she was making so many appearances. Isn't that right, Captain? <laughs> <laughs> Truth. I sometimes look down and I realize I am dressed like Bula. So, you know, the costume, my costume is so comfortable. You were yeah. dressed so like yeah, I my own costume. when you met, remember? You and Bula had the exact yeah, same Yeah, when costume. I met Bula Cooper, we were wearing almost the same outfit. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I froze That's again. Oh, it's Canadian. 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 No, you're good. You're good. You're you're good. Canadian. You're good. You are unfrozen. <laughs> I don't know that there's any costumes in the show that I would take into real life. I mean, you know, they're just they're they're pretty average, and and I I wear um mom man mom jeans and a man shirt, so none of mine is coming with me. But <laughs> so hot. Uh, <laughs> my my shoes are very comfortable. Can yeah, I my shoes are so comfortable. Yes, my, mine too. Good shoes. Okay, there was a sweater that I wear that's like a multi patterned sweater it's in I like, like every i feel like it's in every publicity shot of, <laughs> is of me in this sweater and um tony leslie james who does the costumes we were just talking about this and she said she bought that sweater off of ebay and it it's her most hated costume piece because <laughs> there's only one of them and so and chris is like Diane has to wear that sweater. So now she's had to find people to knit that oh, sweater. Okay. And it ends up costing like thousands of dollars and no one will knit it more than one time. And the funny thing is I remember when he picked it because there was, we were down to like two different sweaters that I could wear. And I did like a little costume parade in a spotlight on stage. And there was a very beautiful, sensible blue, like a um, almost like a fisherman's sweater. And then there was that one that I wear. <laughs> and Chris was like, which one do you like? And I was like, the blue one. And he was like, let's go with the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this is the least sexy show on Broadway. <laughs> You don't think I think we all no look lashes, sexy. no need for lashes, no lashes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do you deal with the emotional taxing state of the show and, in a way, uh, recover for the next day? Hmm. Well, Esther. Did you see how many R's were at the end of Esther's mm -hmm. name? <laughs> that was cool. Esther. That was cool. <laughs> we, you know, we talk about this a lot. Um, and Chris Ashley let us feel all of our feels uh, during the beginning of rehearsal. There were moments when um, one person would get moved and then it just takes one person to kind of lose it or their voice to crack and the rest of us would fall uh, immediately behind. And um, after about a week and a half of that, he was like, okay, I just want to remind you that you were telling the story and uh, you're not feeling it in real time. We wanna let the audience feel these feelings on their own and not tell them how to feel. So um, that's part of the craft, right? Is the like keeping emotionally connected, but not turning the faucet so much that we cannot control it. And that's something that I think we still have to, you know, it, it, for me, it's still a gauge that I'm, I'm fiddling with. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes and, a lot of sense because if you're if you're going through it, then the audience doesn't have the opportunity to exactly go through. It. Yes, that's well right. Said. Well that's said. right. 
And in a way, you're not serving the play, you're serving yourself. Correct. You're getting your own emotional catharsis out of it, and the play might actually be suffering because of what you're doing. <laughs> and I don't think there was a lot of time to ruminate on things. People were like, is that bus coming? I've got to make lasagna. Uh, you know, uh, this person with these kids are really sad. Let's go, like, get them canoeing. Like, just different different things were moving. It was more active than, than, than a kind yeah. of... Uh, marinade of sauce of some kind. It was just, a, it was moving forward. But for, for me, pass. Oh, sorry. sorry, no, no, no I, I was just going to say the, the, the emotional part for, for me, the hard part is hearing other people's stories afterwards because they come and they hit you really fresh and, and sometimes it's yeah. a real surprise and you don't know uh, in it really what you're going to get because somebody may just be loving the show and just when I say that and somebody just needs to tell you what happened to them. So I, I found that over the years I've I've discovered some skills, and then talking to some people who deal with people with trauma, they're like, those are all the things that we've learned. So it's amazing how you kind of come to ways to, and it's not protect yourself because you want to come with an open heart to listen to somebody. You don't want to pretend listen. You want to really be with them because that's one of the reasons you're an actor because you're curious about people. Yeah. But sometimes I will actually I'll pick up a stone. I don't throw it through a window or anything. I'm just saying, pick up a stone and I will put all my energy into that. And then I will say, that is not mine to carry. And I will just, I will drop it. So that's sort of a mechanism for me. Like I will just sort of let it go well, and I wish that, that person well and then not take, yeah, okay, like that's that not too. mine to carry, but I wish you well and I love you and I send you on with love and then try to just literally drop it with the stone. Kind of works yeah. sometimes. But. I like that. Uh, Captain Bess has a cool story about how she uh, had to be unemotional throughout the entire uh, journey there in Gander because she was taking care of her crew and all of her passengers. And it wasn't until she was coming into Dallas, she had landed, uh, they were taxiing in, and someone had uh, draped a huge American flag over the side of the terminal. And that's when she let herself cry for the first time. And I just think that's such a... A beautiful, beautiful moment. I hope I told that story right, Captain. I'll hear about it when we have <laughs> when we hang out in a minute. Just wow, like, that's I, not just, what happened. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So here she is, you know, uh, in stranded in in a foreign town like seven thousand other people, but she's responsible for her crew and her passengers. One hundred percent. She did not stop being captain of of that ship, of that aircraft, wow. uh, until she got them safely landed where, where they were all supposed to be. And, and she didn't really get to see Gander until she went back to, you know. She stayed by yeah. the phone. She was just like trying to get information to relay back to her crew and to her passengers. Yeah, she's she's a badass. Well, that, that, how, she's, much, how much time did you have with these people prior to opening the show, if any? None. They didn't None. want us to do an impersonation. I think that they just cast the show really well. So we were all pretty close to type uh, and pretty close to our characters. And I think that was kind of the most interesting thing when we were meeting everybody. We were like, oh, it's it's the writing is that good that that we all we really had to do was embody it. But like the first time that I met Nick and Diane, we were in the lobby of the La Jolla Playhouse and the show had already opened because her child, grandchild, Diane, I can't remember which it is, was graduating, right? And so she was late, to, not late, but she came after we opened. And I met her in the lobby and she said, well, there you are to me. And I was like, you're Diane. And we gave each other a big hug. And then she, they proceeded to tell me this whole story about this thing that happened where they went to this screech in and they had a fish and I wasn't going to kiss that fish. Well, I did kiss a fish, but, and then he said two more beers, like told me the whole story had not seen the show yet. And I was like, what do you know? It's so, that was just the most fun and nerve wracking. <laughs> the first well, time that your real person sees you play the part. I was literally like, I'm going to pass out. And fall off these chairs and hit my head and die, probably. Well, rumor has it, sadly, we have our last question from the audience. And what? I hear it's a good one. How do Astrid, you I like you seeing you read them. Astrid, every time, goes like this. <laughs> I, know. I could do this. That's okay. You're adorable. Let, I'm just going to tell you two weeks ago, we had the My Fair Lady cast reunion we had rosemary harris on which was such a, a dream oh, wow. and um and every time someone asked her a question she said what 
Yes, so I'm oh, so stealing be that. I'm going to be on every Zoom from now on. Mark, oh, so Mark emailed because he hadn't received his link to watch. So I'm glad he got online. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Experience of come from away change you as a person, and if so, how? We could go around. Let's just go around. Let's start with Jen this time. I, I could um, burst into tears. Yes, it continues to change me. Um, it's it's just a, a lesson in, in being my best self. Like I, I want to be my best self for these people. I want to be my best self to continue to be an ambassador for the show. Um, it has changed the way I look at friendship and life and how I treat myself and others. It has changed me profoundly. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Kendra? Yeah. I feel like um, my curiosity of people became even stronger and my empathy, the honor of hearing stories and um, having my son with me during this time, having something to show that something that's so important to tell this story and you'll sacrifice things to be able to have a chance to tell this story about kindness. It's what Jen was saying is, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you be your best ganderite? You know, or how do you, I, I always, I constantly still, when I'm in traffic, I'm like, gosh, this is not what would go down. <laughs> Gander. <laughs> you know, but it, it continues. It's just a reminder of how self everybody was. And, um, and I continued, yeah, it continues to make me be a better person that I'm not always, you know, it gets you back on track. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Astrid? Uh, yeah, all of those beautiful things. And um, I think Jenna said this before too, and, and I feel this too, like any edges that I had feel like they've kind of been smoothed off by this, sh this show. Nice. And, and I never thought I would, would have done any show this many times and still hear the bar on at the beginning of the show and be so happy to step out on that stage and tell this story. It's just such an honor. And then also, and it's not just because these ladies are here. I would, uh, I am so lucky with the friendships that I've gotten. And you know, you do find your tribe sometimes and you get to be weird and you get to be vulnerable and you get to get mad, you get to get forgiven. You get to do all of it when people are because the, sto the story is so great, you get to go play these beautiful lights that you want to be that too. So, because sometimes when you're in shows where you're supposed to hate each other or something, like there's a lot of uh, aggro, that can kind of bleed into a company. And, and when you have a lot of love, it's, it's uh, I, just, I just love these women with all of my heart. I love you guys. So, and thanks for having us. It's been great. Oh my gosh, yeah. what a pleasure. Thanks, Art. So Oh my goodness. Uh, everything that has been said, absolutely. Uh, I think that it is so important to have something that reminds you that we all have the capacity within us to be kind. Uh, and we can be our best selves if we, you know, raise to the challenge. Uh, and it's so easy not to. <laughs> it's really easy not to. It's really hard to do. Um, and all of these women have a massively special huge place in my heart um i'm so grateful for every one of them and and everybody in the cast and the company the whole entire uh group of people we have we they've amassed this group of people who are all just everyone is wonderful <laughs> there is nobody who, who stands out as that i'm gonna that one over there it just doesn't exist at all um and on a very practical level, it's completely changed my life because I moved to New York and was on Broadway, <laughs> which was not at all on my radar for where my life was going to go. Like I'm a woman of an age. I was not thinking that at this, you know, mature point in my days, I'd be making my Broadway debut and it happened. And it's because of this show. And I, I say this a lot, but it, it, it's still so true that um, there's a line that Sharon says in the show towards the end about the Nick and Diane relationship. She says, uh, we, we never would have, I'm paraphrasing, but we never would have met if this terrible thing hadn't happened. Uh, and that hits me every time because 
I am always aware that this incredible opportunity in my life exists because something really, truly, horrendously awful happened and people died and there was incredible sadness and tragedy and there still is in people's lives but it for me has turned into the greatest opportunity of my life so i always feel like i owe a debt of gratitude to anyone who was affected by the events of, of 9 11 and and i'm so honored to be one of the people who gets to talk about it in a, a different light and shed a different kind of context on things that happen that there was goodness happening and not just in gander in places all over the world uh, and especially in new york there are tons of stories of people who uh just opened their hearts and and their their minds and and gave of themselves in that time uh, people were kinder to each other uh so it's it's just such an honor to be a part of the show and then one last thing to cap it off that i'm a newfoundlander and i get to go on stage every night and tell newfoundlander and labradorians to be proud of themselves <laughs> which you don't get to do very often which is amazing I love it. how about you sharon is it okay that we're over do you need to skip me no <laughs> no <Not there. laughs> but you know what i mean um i would say in short that for me everything that everybody said yes and i was a person who prior to come from away i was very disillusioned by showbiz i had never had an experience where the dreams that i had when i was seven eight nine ten eleven years old in my bedroom in cincinnati ohio actually matched what i experienced on broadway i remember the my first night on broadway which was Les Mis in 1995 and I was doing the show and I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. I was in Les Mis and, and I was full out and somebody, I was doing a <laughs> runaway cart in like slow motion and like acting. And somebody came up right next to me and they said, they were like, calm down. Honey, oh, that's <gasps> wrong. What a bruise. Oh, and, and the thing about it is there is that there, I mean, just real talk, like there is that in this business. And I've had some really crappy experiences in this business and enough that I quit. I was like, I can't do this anymore. My heart is too tender. My dreams and beliefs of what, what should happen in this community of Broadway are too, um, nothing can live up to what I believe should happen. And I'm never gonna get an original role on a Broadway show and all of that, like that talk. And I literally, like, I remember watching New York City in my rear view mirror thinking, that's it. And then it like came and got me and brought me <laughs> back. And then I had this and I just think, what a gift. So it gave me hope where I didn't have any anymore. Wow. Oh. My goodness. Yeah. Hello, wow. ladies. Jeez. You find I cannot thank you enough. Um giant bolts of sunlight to all of us yeah. that are here tonight. So thank you for sharing your hearts with us. So beautiful. And thank a pleasure you, to meet you all. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, ladies. Uh, be well. Where's my camera? Bye. <laughs> oh I don't my know how to God. leave. Well, you, you can forever. stay <laughs> forever. They all wow. can. You know what I find so interesting, Robert? When we when we when we do the last question, yes. randomly we choose. Let's go in this direction. Let's go in that direction, mm -hmm. and it's always perfect. Perfect. You know. Perfect. Just the through line is always perfect. Yeah. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Which shows you, you know. I, I don't know what it, it shows. There's a lot of things. I think there's a lot of lessons to take away from from tonight, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. This is one of those, you know, episodes that I'll have to replay over and over because there's, there's so much, you know. Yes. Um, thank you, Robert. As always. Thank you, Lee. We we're coming sure. up. We we're we so excited. <laughs> Next month. <laughs> June 23rd, the original cast, original because this show started off Broadway. Many of the cast also are the original Broadway cast of A Bronx Tale, including the writer, Chaz Palminteri is gonna be with us. Here. Right here. We're excited. 
June 23rd. There will be another June show before that. We're just waiting to confirm. And then in July, we've just found out that we've got Waitress and Chicago. So we'll specify the dates uh, very soon and let you know. But there's your, that's what you're doing this summer. I know what I'm doing. Are you are you Velma or are you Kelly? Uh, or Kelly, Ke Velma? Roxy. Roxy. Whoa. I, Velma I, think I'm, I think I'm more of a Roxy. Okay, I'll be Velma. <laughs> well, always a pleasure. I want to thank. Um, <laughs> okay, you can stop that right oh, now. Sorry. I want to thank Christian Hawkins and Jonathan Hawkins and the Muse Presents for making all of this happen and making us look and sound decent. And thank you all for joining us and this beautiful, beautiful, inspired cast of, of women. I, I can't thank you enough. Can't thank them enough. And uh, we will see you in a few weeks. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>